This is The Good Government Show. You need to make recycling convenient. If recycling is convenient, people will recycle. That's what they tried to get through to you. So my vision when I came back was to have a drive through facility where people could drive in, get their car unloaded and drive out, and we'd be able to take your hard to recycle items along with your regular recycling items. Just think how much we're saving the earth. That's the plastic that didn't end up in the ocean. That's the the hard to recycle items that's not along the roads, you know, um, that's keeping the, the country or our county clean. It's keeping our county clean and we're saving our environment and that's the main thing. We're reducing our carbon footprint. Less garbage, more recycling, less plastic in landfills and on the roads. This is a story about how one county wanted to make a big change and lessen their carbon footprint. In the process, they showed other governments how it could be done. Welcome to The Good Government Show. I'm Carol Dioria. And I'm Dave Martin. And this is the final episode of season two. It's been a great season of stories, and now we wrap it up in Pennsylvania. But first, as this is our last show of the season, if you like what you heard this season on The Good Government Show, please tell your friends to listen. Make sure to follow us, and please like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. And please rate us where you're listening to us right now. Just take a moment, rate us. Good, five star, thank you. This will help us bring more stories of good government in action next season. Stories like this one of a great recycling program. So, yes, on my way out to West Virginia, I stopped into Fayette County, Pennsylvania, and they are showing the state, and really they're showing the nation, how to recycle and how it's done. Last year, they collected close to 1 million pounds of recyclable items. That's about 500 tons, and that's paper, that's plastic, that's tires, that's appliances, All of it saved from a landfill. That is absolutely helping the planet. It is. And along the way, they changed the way people recycle in their county. And more importantly, the people of Fayette are on board and recycling and the kids in schools are learning that this is what's expected of them. So in other words, tomorrow's parents are learning this is just simply how it's done. Right. And we're going to meet a teacher who does just that. Now, why is Fayette County doing such a great job, though? Sheila Shea. Oh. Right. She is the one with the vision. She had the determination and she was the voice who said, I can make this better. So she's our good government hero. She is our good government hero. But first we have to talk about how Fayette came a model county for recycling in the state of not the nation. So let me introduce you to Vincent Vicines. He's a Fayette County commissioner and he's a former county recycling coordinator. This is an issue he really cares about. A lot of people care about the environment, and, and there is a following for recycling in our county. It's, it's a tradition here in Fayette County. We were always a leader in recycling, uh, and we continue to be a leader in recycling. So the county has always been a leader in the recycling, huh? Yeah. So what happened was uh, Goodwill, um, national organization, they had a drop-off center, and they were handling the bulk of the county's recycling. But they pulled out, and Vince and the other commissioners saw an opportunity to create a really a stronger program. So they bought the center. They created a modern drop-off center, and with the help of state funds, they really expanded the program, starting with new recycle bins. I love this. So the state and the county work together to make this happen like a partnership. Right. But then I'm going to have Vince explain what really made the big change. We hired uh, Sheila Shea and, uh, as our coordinator in 2016, and the program is to continue to, to, to unfold and develop, and, and it's garnering larger amounts of recycling. We've got the schools involved. They're all recycling in Fayette County now. We got businesses that had never recycled involved. We have businesses that maybe stopped recycling for a few years when the markets were bad. They're back in in, in the game of recycling and, and participating. So, and we're promoting it countywide. Okay, so tell me about Sheila Shea. I'm gonna tell you all about Sheila Shea after the break. Okay. The Good Government Show welcomes a new sponsor for season two, and that's NACO, and that's the National Association of Counties. Carol, did you know that county government affects more people than any other form of government? Well, I do now. Funny you would think city or the federal government is bigger. Well, right, but but it's not. You think about this. Roads, highways, hospitals, schools, recycling, law enforcement, water, sewers. In most of the country, those services are maintained by the county. That's county government. And we want to see good county government, and that's where NACO comes in. Exactly. They're a nationwide organization that represents all 
3,069 counties across the USA. Now, that's a lot of support and more importantly, brain power. Exactly. And they have many organizations and committees and they do things like share best practices and they work together on national issues. And they are urban, suburban and rural counties that have different challenges, but they can still work together. Yes, they all work together. So NACO helps county government work better. And as we see in this and other episodes, when county government works, well, that's just good government. So thanks, NACO, for providing us with great stories and helping support good government. And thanks, NACO, for supporting the Good Government Show. And remember, citizens, don't forget to vote. So, Sheila Shea, she is the one who really took this on as a mission, and she kicked it into high gear. As she told you at the top, she set out to make recycling easier and more convenient for everyone. And it's worked. So I met with Sheila and I spent the day with her. Um, we met first at the town's recycling center in town. So what's that like? Well, you'll have to check out the photos of Sheila. She's in front of one of the large bins um, and it's clean. You drive in, you drop off the recycling center and Sheila and her crew, they do the rest. Do they take everything? They do. Computers, TVs, tires, furniture, appliances, paper and plastic. And chances are, if you pull your car in, Sheila Shea is going to be the one that enters really? out your car. Yep. She's I, I have a question. Yes. Does it smell? No. It's a very clean recycling center. Oh. You, you walk in. Because I skeeve those things. No, there's no reason to. There's no reason to at the Fayette Recycling Center. Okay. You walk in, it's clean. They take really good care of the place. From where you got this idea to where you are today, how do you feel about the progress you've made? Shocked that it happened so quick. Um, amazed, happy. I mean, I really got to see my vision come to life. It's what I thought of when I started in 2017, and now it's really coming to life. And- I'm just excited that I can save the environment and, and to be able to do it for Fayette County, the county I live in. Good progress, bins and a drop-off center. And what are the collections like? Well, here are some stats. These are from 2021. And this is between the bins and the drop-off center. So in Fayette County, they collected, are you ready? 34 tons of scrap metal, wow. 80 tons of mattresses and other furniture, 100 tons of electronics, that's computers, that's TVs, ovens, radios. Wow. 3,800 tires, and that's almost 24 tons. Those numbers are really impressive. It is. See, Fayette is a rural county, and their population, it only makes them a medium-sized county, but overall, they rank fourth in recycling in the state. So the two biggest cities, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, they rank just behind them. Hmm. So where I live on Long Island, my recycling gets picked up right at my house, but it's different there, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and there's a mix in Fayette. So they have drop-off centers, and they have 34 bins they placed around the county. And you're going to hear about this as I travel around with Sheila. And if you check out our website, you'll see the photos I took of the recycle bins. So there's me and other people at the bins. You know, this is like you went on a recycling road trip. Uh, I did. So, um, you know, listen, Fayette County has some incredible sites. First, if you're a history buff, as I am, it's where George Washington fought in the French and Indian Wars. This is where he built Fort Necessity. So okay. it was it was like the frontier back then. It was the site of the Whiskey Rebellion. I'm sure you remember the Whiskey mm -hmm. Rebellion in school. No, no, yes, no, no, not no. Really. <laughs> uh, they, a bunch of rural farmers in Pennsylvania decided they didn't want to pay their whiskey tax. They got their muskets out. And for the first time, the president said, nope, 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 you got to pay your tax. So he deployed troops and put down the Whiskey Rebellion right there in Fayette County. There's natural caves. There's plenty of parks. There's rivers, waterfalls, and hiking trails. Folks come to this area. They, they do a lot of rafting. They do a lot of kayaking, a lot of hiking, mountain biking. Real popular destination. It's so rich in history. They really have an incentive between that and the tourism to keep it clean. Yeah, they really do. So let me introduce you to some of the folks who help the county recycle. They see the benefits of where they live and work. They're going to explain all that to you. And we're going to start. We're going to go back to school. My name is Krista Sabatula. I'm a librarian at Manellan School for the Uniontown Area School District. And we re recycle at our school for K to, K to 6 for about, I mean, 10, 10, 12 years now, recycling. And the way we recycle at school, we have containers in the classroom, containers in the hallway, and the students are recycling everything from plastic to paper to cardboard. Variety of things in the school, and the students are doing it. They have containers in the room, they put it in the room, the teacher says go dump it out, it goes in the hallways, and then we take it outside to our big, large recycling container. That's by the playground. Wow, start them young. Exactly. The school has one of those large recycling bins. So all the kids at school recycle and they see the program work. They actually can see it. And as Krista points out, there's another benefit to starting the kids young. So it's all there. You just have to teach. It's not, it's the kids you can teach. It's to get their adults and parents and who they live with to do it too. 
at school, we can do it. But what happens when they go home? It's the push to get the kids to bring the, the parents to bring the recycling up to the schools or the containers in the areas. <laughs> That's right. The kids teach the parents. Yep. The kids teach the parents, but mostly the kids get a really big kick out of seeing the recycle bins emptied. Apparently it comes right after lunch. They're all excited. It's loud. It's lots of noise. Mm, they what all they watch. love is the distraction. I well, think. they might love the distraction, but Hey, either way, they really see what's going on and they get into it. And um, there's another element of this. The school is part of a national recycling program. So they recycle and they get points, which translates to money for the schools. So when the kids want new balls or a swing, they know how they have to pay for it. They can earn it by recycling. That is such a great idea. And it really makes it more meaningful. They can relate to it. Right. So now the kids know that when they toss the paper in the right bin, that can mean a new kickball for their school. So. Continuing on my recycling tour of Fayette County, I went to a place called Riz's Restaurant. Uh, so let me guess, you had a meal. Yeah, I did. You would have liked Riz's. <laughs> um, it's in downtown Uniontown. Um, little, It's got great pizza. I had their Italian wedding soup. That's always a good one. Who doesn't like good Italian wedding soup? Right. Very nice there. Burgers. It's, it's kind of a neighborhood place. Um, and they've made recycling. It's just part of their business. I talked with Jerome Vinnick. He's the owner's dad. And twice a week, he loads up his pickup truck and he recycles. And he's been doing this for years. And he really appreciates what the county is doing. I, I like it. I, it's, it's a step in the right direction. They've made it convenient because, and it's convenient for me to go out to this, the recycling center because it's not that far. And I have a truck. But throughout the county, they have their bins. So it's, it's not hard for anybody. There's got to be a bin relatively close, no matter where you live in the county, that you could recycle. It's just the right thing to do in my mind. I, I hate to see something go to a landfill if it can be reused and turned into a new product. So, Carol, are you ready to take a tour yourself? Because after the break, we're going to Ohio Pile. Ohio Pile? We're going to Ohio Pile. I yeah. love the name. All right, you'll have to wait. More on that after the break. The Good Government Show is sponsored by Liquid. So here's the thing about Liquid. They do their homework. So Carol, I'm gonna give you a fun fact. A recent study found that over 80% of retail shoppers conduct online research before making a purchase. Do you do that? Yeah, I like to know what I'm buying. But if you're a business, it takes more time than researching for a new TV, say. Yeah, and for a business, you really have to do your research and you really have to evaluate who you're working with and make sure the company you're about to partner with is a good fit. And that makes sense. So you want to stand out to other companies that are checking out your company. And that's where Liquid can sim. They can help your business create a digital presence with impact so you can be impressive to new businesses and you know keep your customers. And it's not just about a website. See how much I learned about Liquid since the first season? Well, of course. Well, Liquid's our partners. We want to know everything about them. And what they can do is they can guide you to where to advertise, and they can make sure your social media is relevant, and then it engages your customers. And they make sure your digital story answers your potential customers' questions before they even ask them. And that's what Liquid is good at, creating a full marketing and online digital presence. Liquid's been around for nearly two decades. They have lots of experience and a lot of research to back up their plans. And they have a team of designers, marketers, strategists, and developers. They can help companies in many industries with award-winning creative campaigns, content, and websites. All good reasons to have Liquid plan your next digital marketing strategy. So check them out and talk to a Liquid professional. Visit them at www.liquidint.com. And you will love Liquid as much as we do. Because we love Liquid. We want to welcome back as a sponsor to the Good Government Show, Kutztown University of Kutztown, Pennsylvania. And you want to talk about their rugby team. Well, they do have a good rugby team. They just won a national tournament. And what I did was I called a friend. His daughter played at Kutztown. She played on the rugby team. And I asked him, what did he like best about Kutztown? You mean besides the rugby team? Well, yeah, besides the team, obviously the team first. But he responded to me and said something I didn't know. His favorite thing is the chicken tower, or it's also called the angry chicken. What? I hesitate to ask, the angry chicken? Well, it's such a landmark that it's actually the school's logo. It's a clock tower. And apparently when you look from a special angle, um, the clock looks a little bit like a chicken with an open beak. So okay. it's the angry chicken. Okay, then. Well, let's talk about the other stuff, like that their degree program in music business is now nationally accredited. They offer undergraduate certificates in cybersecurity and technical writing. So is this what we do? Is this technical oh, writing? Oh, no, 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 no. Take a class and maybe get better at writing. Oh, come on. That's not fair. You know what? You would benefit from the new 
graduate certificate program and be a school social worker. Maybe you'd be nicer. <laughs> All right. Well, the point is Kutztown is a forward looking university. They also offer Pell Promise scholarships. And for students who qualify, student tuitions and fees are all covered. And that's just some of why we like Kutztown and are happy to be associated with this university. Oh, and my friend thought it was really cool that sometimes the locals, they ride through in a horse and buggy. So check out Kutztown University. That's Kutztown University and cheer on the rugby team. Of course. Yes, please. Ohio Pile? Let me see. You did schools in downtown. So, okay. Tell me about Ohio Pile. Okay. So Ohio Pile, it's the Ohio Pile Falls. It's really the main attraction here. Sheila and I walked out on the observation platform at the falls and I could see why people come here. So listen. We are standing on the balcony looking at the Ohio Powell Falls, the waterfall. And is this what brings everybody to this area? This is what brings everybody to this area. The rafting, the waterfall, the hiking, the bike trail. Um, yeah, that's what brings everybody here. So how close are we to the closest recycling bin? Less than a mile. You know, I can actually hear the falls over your conversation. I think I want to go. Yeah, you should. Check it out. Um, and by the way, there's photos on our site. You can see me doing the interview right there on the platform. A sight to behold, I'm sure. Yes. So they really are getting the entire area to recycle. And okay, so Ohio Pile is not just falls. It's my new favorite town. Let me tell you about Ohio Pile, the town. Population, 37. What? 37? 37? 37. I think I have 37 people just on my one block. I, I think there's like... 14 houses there all together. Wow. It's a small town. It's a big tourist destination. Um, so there's just, you know, a few people that live there, but then there's, you know, you can rent bikes and kayaks, et cetera. That's amazing. But yes, people come to Ohio Pile. Um, and we stop by the did recycle bin that's in the town of Ohio Pile. And we stop by in mid-March, really before the tourist season began. During the winter months, there's hardly, there might be three, 400 people through the area. Um, in the summer months, there's over a million people that comes to Ohio Powell State Park. So we pick it up weekly. So for this being an off season, yeah, it's, it's good. We're getting a lot more residents to recycle and help us keep Fayette County green. This really is a government project that is really, seems to be embraced by everyone. It is. Now I'm going to introduce you to Ben Moyer, and he lives near the falls, and he really wants to keep this area beautiful because for him, it's personal. This is his home. And of course, he takes pride in his hometown. He really does. And he spreads the gospel of recycling, and he lets his neighbors know how they can pitch in. So one day I met him uh, just outside the falls. It was raining, so he had to set in on an awning. Uh, it was a kayak rental shop, but we were just a few feet from the recycle bin that's located inside the state park. They came down here to fish one day and found this bin and I said, this is even better. So I just, I just, and it's only five miles from where I live and I'm always down this way anyway. So I, I bring my recycling down here and put it in there. So check out the photo of Bob and I, we're standing in front of one of the bins on my recycling tour. And he really appreciates this aggressive county program. We finally, after a long time, we have leadership in county government to match the significant natural resource base that we have here uh, and and so that people can make a, a, a positive contribution to this by res responsibly recycling their waste. So just how many bins are there? Well, there are 34 bins that are located throughout Fayette County. And here's a, here's a little fun fact. More than a million pounds is over 500 tons. So Carol, think about that. Now, don't hold me to my math here. <laughs> I would never right? do that. <laughs> but when you add that up, it's about 1,000 garbage trucks. Yeah, that's of, a lot. Right. 1,000 garbage trucks full of recycled material, all of it staying out of a landfill. Well, you know, when it comes to recycling strength, clearly they are punching above their weight. Fayette is punching above its weight and it's created a model for the entire state. So Pat Stefano is the area's state senator, and he's quick to offer up Fayette's program as an example to others. Well, I'll tell you, the best part about this program and recycling in general is how much you can pull out of your landfill and then reuse. Recycle, reuse, you hear that term a lot. That's what's most important. And Fayette County has been one of the premier counties leading that charge and getting waste out of the landfill. And then I encourage all municipalities to be involved to work with Fayette County here locally and then in other counties across the state 
to reach out to Fayette County to see how they're doing their program, if they can install and, in, and do a similar program themselves. So while I was at the recycling center, I met with Sharon Stivick. She's the program manager for waste management for the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Her office helps with state funds for the project. What is it about this program that impresses you? The fact that they're all cooperating together, like the county working with all the local municipalities, working with the school districts, that impresses me. Is that unusual? Is that hard? Well, that's that's difficult to get elected officials all working together on the same page. And I think that that's, that shows that everyone wants this recycling program in Fayette County to work. It sounds like it's working. It is, and it really shows how when politicians make the right plans and hire the right people, Sheila Shea, Sheila Shea, Sheila Shea, <laughs> they can make government work for the people they serve. And I want to go back to Vince. He's the former recycling manager, Turn County Commissioner. I asked him what he tells other people about this program. I tell them we've really uh, progressed. Uh, you talk about an example of good government uh, in Fayette County. Look at our recycling program. And, uh, you know, that's uh, it's working. It's uh it's noted as one of the best in the state. It has been for 30 years and uh, we're, you know, we've, we've reconfigured it uh, since 2015 and it's, uh, it's back up there again as one of the best. And they have plans to expand. They're working with other area businesses and they're gonna expand the program. And the future may hold ways to convert recycling into energy. All of that's being examined. Scott Dunn, this is another county commissioner. He says for him, Tires tossed on the side of the road, it's just the biggest recycling challenge. Littering of tires has been a problem here. So, you know, not only do we develop business based on recycling, we actually beautify our county. And I, you know, I'm maybe um, biased, but I think we have the most beautiful county in the state of Pennsylvania. So I, I'm just so amazed that you think a rural county like this wouldn't be so progressive, but they really are. So who are you going to give the last word on Fayette County recycling? Well, to? we only one person. We have to go back to our hero, Sheila Shea. She needs a medal. She does. I just, it, it was the job. I always give 110% in whatever I'm doing. And it, it was a good thing for the county. It's a good thing for the environment. Um, I'm making a difference. And I just, I, I get that kind of passion when, you know, I'm just excited to do it. It's, it's just my job. Well, that's what I'm talking about. This is great. Sheila is not an elected official. She's not running for any office. She isn't in it for the power or the prestige. She is simply doing her job. Doing her job. Yeah, doing, I love it. She's doing the job the county hired her to do. Right. And she cares. She does. And one of the many government workers, you know, who people really never see. They're behind the scenes. They just get up. They go to work. They are truly dedicated to serving the people. Sheila Shea truly is good government at its finest. And that's what our show is about. Good government. What a great way to wrap up the season. It is a government worker, not in the always glamorous pursuit of collecting trash, but she's cleaning up her county. You know, it's been quite a season on the Good Government Show. So here's a question for you. Yes. What was your favorite story? Well, my week in West Virginia really was uh, <laughs> pretty incredible. I got to go to coal country and see how they're transforming coal country with two completely different approaches. One, Teachers are leading the way to revitalize McDowell County. And in Boone County, they put a lavender farm where a coal mine used to be, and they're hiring former coal workers to work in the farms. So two really incredible stories, two really incredible government projects. And on top of that, I got lavender cream and I love it. Do you love your lavender cream? <laughs> Have you been using it? Yes, I do. Do you need more? No, I don't need more. Yeah. I, I use it judiciously. All right. Well, they, you could always get more. How about <laughs> how about some spray mist or some oh, some lavender maybe CBD spray cream? Spray mist after my son has been sitting in the car. There you go. Yep. We, <laughs> you can AppalachianBotanical.com. Check them out. Yes. Um, so what about you, Carol? What were your favorite stories this year? Well, I have to say, I really love the foster parent story. I love those young women trying to make their life those better. Those were and survivors. Oh, he's, I love those kind of survivors, stories. Survivors, yes. And, but the county really helped them out. Sure. And, and really gave them a helping hand. And it's a pilot project, so with any luck at all, other counties will pick up on this. It'll get expanded and we'll see more of these. Absolutely. We have to stay on top of that one. Yes, we We have do. to stay on top of all these stories. Because <laughs> I'm going back to West Virginia, because remember... The barbecue festival. Oh, that's right. I right. forgot about that. The Coal Country Barbecue but Festival. I think I should get in on that one. You know, you, you can't have all the fun. You, you think you should go? All right. Well, you know, we got a, a trip to West Virginia planned. So, yeah, a lot of great stories this year. Hey, we have more. You're going to have to wait for season three.
We have more. I'm, I'm going to preview this. Okay. I'm going back to West Virginia. You're going back to West Virginia? I got a little story in West Virginia. I have- I In have your in pocket that you're not telling me about. I got a story in West Virginia. We're going- It better not be a barbecue thing. Uh, I, I, well- it Because depends, I'm coming. Depends on how, I, timing is everything. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But uh, no, I, I am going back to West Virginia. There's a really inspiring story there about a new national park that just really? opened. Yeah, it's- So it's, we'll have to wait for next season they've, they've changed that. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff we're working on. So we have, I have files and files of stories to look for. So yes- but I'm going back to West Virginia. So all that's coming up in season three. Well, so listen, I was going to say thank you to everybody who's been listening. I was going to say thanks to everybody for listening. Hey, we hope you enjoyed season, season two here. We have 10 great stories this year. We have five stories of good government show extras. So please check it out. Uh, check it out where you listen to your podcast. Please tell all your friends, uh, check out our website. You can see and meet some of the people that we talk about and we'll be back for season three. And I'm Carol Dioria. We want to see you back. And I'm Dave Martin. This is The Good Government Show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. If you like our show, please tell your friends to listen too. Follow us and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and be part of the conversation. And please give us a five-star rating right here where you're listening to this podcast. Your support helps us continue to tell stories of good government in action. For extras on all of our shows, visit our website, goodgovernmentshow.com. The Good Government Show is produced by Valley Park Productions. Jim Ludlow, David Martin, and David Snyder are the executive producers. Jason Stershik is our editor and producer. Some transcriptions were done by Kofi Ajin Umpa. Our hosts are me, David Martin, and Carol Dioria. Join us again for The Good Government Show wherever you listen to your podcasts. Okay.